Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, he is an economist, an administrator, a writer, a marketer. He's former director general and rector of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA. He is former chairman of the National Development Planning Commission, NDPC, currently CEO of the Ghana Christian International High School, Professor Emeritus Stephen Ade, my guest tonight. I'm really delighted to see you, Prof. So it's been a I. while. Uh, how are you doing? Doing well, given the age. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that um, you've retired, but I also know that you've been very busy. What have you been up to? A lot of things, of course. You see around, I'm a farmer. Yes. Not only here, I'm, I do a lot of farming on my own. Okay. Again, of course, public sector service is in, in my blood. <laughs> you may accept that there's a difference between when you are not retired, you are paid. When you retire, you work for free. You work for free. <laughs> so for God and country. For God, family and country, <laughs> which is the motto of Ghana Christian International High School. School. I do a lot of writing. Even in May, three books of mine were published. That's the Gimpa story, living by strategy and managing your life, mm -hmm. which we think that it's time for us to share a legacy for others who to follow. Mm -hmm. So, but of late, my wife and I have just completed nine books for children, teaching children how to read, yeah. and they are all being printed in Dubai. They should arrive probably by the end of uh, January. Okay. And then I can go to redeem myself before Honorable Edutu because <laughs> I've promised him for ages. <laughs> and he's been waiting in earnest. Yes. <laughs> so um, those books are supposed to aid uh, young children to read and write in six months? Normally, especially if parents take charge using those series, within six months, a normal five to six year old becomes literate. Okay. I did it with my ch four children when they were younger. But of course, when your children grow up and you are paying school fees in the university, you forget other people's children <laughs> until my grandchildren came. <laughs> and, and then I found that it still works. Mm -hmm. All my two older grandchildren, by the time they were six, were totally literate. That means they can read any mm -hmm. book. Okay. They may not understand all of it, but they can read physics, chemistry, medicine book wow. at the age of six. Okay. And my wife and I feel that one of the legacies we should give to children in Ghana and the Ghana Education Service is to get these books and then teach how to use it mm. and then let it be for public use. I know there are other books that you, you're working on as well. Well, we've worked over 30 books already, so mm. with this nine, it's more than 30. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm doing a major work now. One is a major work on the Bible. Okay. I happen to be a theologian, yes, of and course. I'm doing a, a one chapter per day reference for posterity. So okay. I'm working on that one. Mm. I have a few economic and social uh, works also on the way. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, the next three years, this Bible study guide mm -hmm. is going to be my pivotal one. Mm -hmm. The rest will come along. And, and the project on Gimpa, the, the Gimpa story? Well, that's, the book is out. It's up to the, those who are managing Gimpa now mm. to learn from it. Okay. And so if they want some of us to help, okay. we will work, help for God, family, and, and country. country. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm much interested in the Gimpa story, but first I want us to talk about your recognition. I mean, a, a number of them, Leadership Excellence Award, Fellow and Patron of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, Doctor of Letters from Gimpa. It must have come with a lot of commitment and hard work. Oh, I thank God for those ones. Those things, they always come as a surprise. And okay. I believe that if you are a Christian especially, you don't go for awards, you yes. serve. Yep. <laughs> and if other people recognize it. But sometimes too, people have worked hard and they have not been recognized. Mm -hmm. So we must be very careful <laughs> when you are noted. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're so right. But the Gimpa story, yeah. you during your tenure actually transformed it. I mean, from a, an institution that was small, under resourced, into a successful organization. I mean, how did you do it? First of all, I'm saying it was a privilege 
to be given an opportunity to be the head of a public service school yeah. and to also transform it into a university. But let me acknowledge two people. First of all, my first council, they used to call them Court of Governors, headed by Mr. B.K. Mensa mm -hmm. with Mrs. Dr. Sylvia Boy and that things were, were excellent. Okay. Excellent in two ways. First, they allow me, if, if they don't allow you, you I was doing things go. which had not been done before. Yes. And secondly, even when I made mistake, you know, say, please, young man, don't. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the first Enjoy class of things. people that I must acknowledge. The second is that I had some good staff. Okay. NSK Mensah, Dr. Lawrence uh, 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 Kanai, um, people like, uh, what is his name, Dr. Joe Mensah and Sa, and the rest. So even though I had some challenges with some workers, there were a few faithful people, and they did a lot. Uh, can I and SK, for example, in charge of consultancy, can sometimes work till 3 a.m. Oh, wow. And they will come and put the document under my <laughs> door. Wow. Because I normally sleep at 8.30 and mm -hmm. wake up at 4. Okay. I tell them, me, I cannot stay with you. <laughs> but if you put it there, I'll wake uh, up at <laughs> 4 a.m. and work on it for about four hours. Okay. So I think that I... And of course, both the NDC government, you know, I came, people thought that I was appointed under Kufu administration. No, mm -hmm. I was appointed under NDC by, under the Rawlings administration in okay. 2000. Okay. Except that, Fofi and Twabam, when they appointed me, <laughs> maybe it was a good or a bad or good of me for them, then they lost power. Oh, so okay. I work on the Kufu for eight more years. Mm -hmm. And when Kufu's term came to the, uh, and that December, I turned 60. Okay. So people think that, you know, I was appointed by Kufo and then went with Kufo. <laughs> 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 That's it. Uh, no. Yes, I work under him. But I thank God for both administrations, especially Honorable, then uh, Vice Pres uh, President Atta Mills, mm -hmm. and then under Kufo, especially also with Jacob Chebilante Chib as. Uh, what is the chief of staff? Mm -hmm. I mean, not that they came and said, but their attitude yeah. and their support, and they all of them will come to Gimpa. They had better places, mm -hmm. but not like today they go to uh, uh, big hotels. They will come and have their cabinet retreats and everything in Gimpa. Uh, Gimpa. In other words, they wanted to encourage you. Yes. And so I, I was blessed. Mm -hmm. But that aside, it was a hard work. You had to have keep to the vision, mm -hmm. distractions. Mm -hmm. You have to ward them off and do the best that you can. I, I was doing everything. I was cleaning with people. I was teaching <laughs> along with them, uh, <laughs> apart from my executive <laughs> job. But Once a teacher, always a yes, teacher. <laughs> I love teaching. So therefore, you cannot, you can't say that I'm the vice chancellor. Uh -huh. and No, no. As for classroom, you can't take me out. But what's the motivation? <laughs> yes, seeing results, lives being transformed, having an impact on your country. I mean, these are the rewards. Uh, I had a driver say, uh, no, not a driver, photographer in Gimpa. I say, <laughs> Many people think that we should be working for, yes, when you get the money, it's a byproduct. Mm -hmm. But for me, the results, the lives changed yeah. and the rest. And even today, even let me tease you, I can say that Honorable Babin and Honorable Osewusu uh -huh. were classmates sitting under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> you their masters. I mean, what else can you it's do? It's fulfilling. It's fulfilling. Than this. And when I see uh, <laughs> now Obama you put in uh, <laughs> what they call order, order. I say, I say I'm a failure. <laughs> 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 so I mean, and you know, especially in Gimpa, when you have these people as students, mm -hmm. I was learning more from them than myself. Okay. So I, I taught them leadership one, leadership two, I would teach economics and the rest. Okay. <laughs> because, and most of the time, you are discussing with people who really were very experienced mm -hmm. and they contributed as much as. Okay. And if you have a good teaching, you don't go and just give lectures to such big men. Yes. You interactive and other things mm -hmm. and... Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. It was it was a ball. It was hard work, yes. but I'm, I enjoyed myself you at Gimba. <laughs> Actually, I, for me, work is hobby. 
Yeah. So I never get, get bored. bored or tired with work. I wake at uh, 8 o'clock, 8.30, I fall dead asleep <laughs> <laughs> for eight hours, even to now. That's it's what good. I do. And it's then I wake that up. That means you have enough rest as yes. well. And then I, and 4 o'clock, spend time with the Lord, and then work begins. Begins. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Today, I was up by 3.35, 37, to be exact. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting yeah. to know. But I'm also happy that you were also chairman at the National Development Planning Commission. What has happened to our 40-year plan? Actually, simultaneously, <laughs> I found myself chairman of NDPC, chairman of GRA, and a member of the Judicial Council. Yes. <laughs> All in one. <laughs> well, first of all, the 40-year plan was never published. It wasn't concluded before mm. Honorable Kwesibotwe of Blessed Memories term. Uh, I mean, they decided to resign, which mm. I thought they shouldn't have resigned. Mm. When we took over, we looked at it, and it was such a voluminous book. 465 pages, pages or so. I just look, <laughs> <laughs> no matter what is in it, <laughs> the politicians won't read it, <laughs> let alone, uh, neither the uh, civil servants. Mm -hmm. So we did not throw it away. Mm. We extracted the essence of it and did a very short directive one we call Ghana at 100. Yeah. But Ghana at 100 was the same as the 40-year plan. Okay. Because their 40-year plan was ending at 2057, when Ghana will be 100 years. Yeah. Okay. So, so Ghana at 100. So we summarize it into that. And we, so there's a document called Ghana at 100 okay. and published it. Hmm. But sad to say, honestly, the problem is not NDPC. The problem is that our politicians are not interested in anything long term. Okay. We didn't even have opportunity to present it to the president, and they dissolved the uh, NDPC and brought in another set. Wow. So I mean, the, so the problem is not that we don't have the capacity and the plans, but those who should own it will not. Mm -hmm. And while we were doing all those things, uh, the senior minister was the one in charge of Ghana Beyond Aid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, but. If you do Ghana Beyond Aid or the Safu Mafu, yeah. you think that when the Safu Mafu is not there and another person is there, they will have anything to do with it. <laughs> so they are not interested in strengthening the National Development Planning Commission yeah. to do a bipartisan yeah. direction for this country, which at least will guide everybody else. And mm. that is one of the bane. Mm. And eventually, believe it or not, I ask to be relieved of being the chairman of NDPC. Mm -hmm. Because I can't waste my limited time doing things which I know will be fruitless. Would be fruitless. And, yeah. uh, and of course, for a man like you who believe in results, yeah. that would be uh, very disturbing to continue yeah, with yeah. that. But it, it's painful it is. that our politicians are interested. At, at, at this moment, everybody is talking about 2024. Mm -hmm. Yes. And most of them is, you know, it elections. To get my also the chance. To, for state capture mm -hmm. and to enrich ourselves. That's all that matters. None of them is saying that. I mean, at this moment, we are in a serious economic crisis. Mm -hmm. Both sides are just fighting. This is the time you go to America or anywhere else on such times, whether your opposition or government, is how do mm -hmm. we save Ghana, shorten this? the crisis so that the Ghanaian will get a relief. No, 2020, 2020 uh, breaking, the, breaking, breaking the eight, eight. or, you know, Mahama uh, Abibu. <laughs> Stopping the breaking of the eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad, sad, sad. It is indeed a sad spectacle. But also, you were board chair of the Ghana Revenue authority yeah a and privilege to serve that definitely i mean how how was the experience like <laughs> wonderful <laughs> in, in two ways <laughs> you know as from the day i went there some people within there thinking that the transformation we are embarking may affect them negatively mm -hmm. associated with some useless tabloids yes. and every week there was something about me Oh, they know my foreign accounts. I'm stealing money into it <laughs> and everything else. That was one track. It was quite interesting. <laughs> I says, well, are you crazy? 
if you know, oh, they know the account number, everything else. Oh, really? And you won't give it to the Ghana police. <laughs> to come and arrest him. <laughs> arrest him. <laughs> Just, so that was the side and some, uh, I might say one or two people within who were just political ideologues. <laughs> just, <laughs> but that was one side. The other side was that there was opportunity with the mainstream mm. to institute certain policies which I hope will positively affect the organization. Mm. For example, for three years we were there, there had not been, before us, there had not been any promotion. Mm. How, how can you, you, you have not done evaluation of staff for three years. Another crazy thing was that until we took over and when you go to one GRA office, you say it's a small tax office. Mm -hmm. So if you, have, you are not considered to be a small tax office, you can't pay. <laughs> you go an, to another place, it's the medium tax office. I see. Then you go to another place, it's a large tax office. Wow. And some, some phenomena, we couldn't understand it. <laughs> but we ended up now, it is only one taxpayer's office. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can someone bring money and you tell the person, that you know, this is a small taxpayer's office, so you can't <laughs> get the money. I'm taking take the money away. <laughs> so there were a few fundamental things we did, which I'm, I thank God. But for us, the full year is the first time I know in Ghana's history, whereby what the government expected in the budget, we exceeded it by three billion. Wow. And of course, the thanks was very great. Yeah. At the end of it, yeah. we, we were dissolved and we asked to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should look for you again because, I mean, we've never <laughs> met our target. And, and recently with the VAT increment, the yeah. 2.5 increment, yeah. uh, many have questioned why we need an increment because um, the blame has been that... The uh, correction. The the GRE yes. has not been uh, successful in, been actually in, in implementing actually ensuring compliance. Yes. And they've all always burdened the few, about 40% law abiding citizens who want to pay their Less taxes. Less than 40%. And left <laughs> the over 60% who have always evaded taxes off the hook. And so you're always burdening us. And so we didn't even need the 2.5 if we had done our work well. Well, I think that there's a point there, but I wouldn't go a big area of taxation other than that we will finish. But okay. in the area of VAT alone, mm -hmm. we are collecting less than 20%, uh, probably a, at most a quarter. Why? Is the it GRE not up yes. to the task? So that is where we were focusing, because you have to make it electronic. You must ensure compliance. I hear that recently they went to China more mm -hmm. and closed it for not compliance. Definitely. And then when they reopened it, mm. within one month, they collected what was being collected from there for one full year in one month. Interesting. You, you go to the average Chinese, I'm not, I'm not picking on the Chinese, mm -hmm. but this is the place I've been. Yeah. You go to a Chinese restaurant mm. and they ask you, do you want to pay a, a VAT or not? Yes, yes, you do. Uh, yes. So I agree with you. There is the need for compliance. Take property tax. Mm -hmm. The rates are too low. You yeah. have a, a house in West Legon, yeah. and they bring you 2,000, at most 2,000 uh, rate. No, no, see this, okay. a year. Mm. And even when you don't pay it, nobody will come after will you. Come after you. you and you c so there are s the rates, some of the rates, not VAT, must be improved, mm -hmm. but the compliance. And you have to do so. That's where I must say I support what uh, Dr. Baumia is doing. Mm. You have to do more dig digita digitization okay. and ensure that these things are done. Mm. I mean, when we had 100,000 NAPCOs, I said that you should be using the NAPCOs to make sure that they go and collect the taxes. Mm -hmm. And if they don't collect the taxes, you don't pay them. They don't go on strike for not having <laughs> been paid. <laughs> so I agree with you. There's a lot. And it's, it's obvious. At least, given the tax rate, we are not co correcting at least mm -hmm. 40, 30 to 40% yeah. of mm -hmm. the taxes, which at current rate we should. So I agree with those 
who think that it's not so much increasing the taxes, yeah. but making sure that everybody pays and they are compliant. compliant. Right. Uh, right. So between 1986, 1989, you worked as a senior economist at the Common Secretari Commonwealth Secretariat. When I finished my master's, I worked with Ghana Investment Promotion Center, which used to be called Capital Investments Board okay. for 12 years. Okay. That's in between, of course, I did my doctorate. Mm. And I think that uh, the experience there was very, very important, especially mm. being mentored mm. by Dr. Kwame Donkofojo, okay. a Ghanaian who became a de facto minister for finance under mm. a champion and became the Ghanaian president of African Development Bank. Mm -hmm. And he was, his mentoring was great. Okay. And you were asking me... Uh, I mean, the take home... The from take home from London. Yes. The first is that I found that if you worked well as a Ghanaian, the same experience serves you well mm -hmm. internationally. Because okay. I, I went to London and mm -hmm. it was almost like working from one office to, to another office mm. and so it was such a an opportunity and a joy for us to go there mm. and also of course there you have had international atmosphere mm -hmm. so you learn from other people okay. and that for me was a good one and most of the time we were serving the commonwealth finance ministers conferences okay and as I was there, I was responsible for World Bank and IMF affairs. Okay. So again, it exposes you to the IMF workings, the World Bank, and the rest. So it was a privilege. Mm. To Professor Emeritus Stephen Adey, my guest tonight, he is the fourth of seven male children. <laughs> and he says where he was born is now a bush. Why so? Wait for me. When I return from this break, he'll be telling us all about it. He has a very interesting story growing up, eating um, fussy and uh, fufu, and every, fufu day. every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A fussy <laughs> breakfast, a fussy <laughs> lunch, fufu dinner. Excellent. When I return from this break, he'll be telling us all about his growing up in Shuremuase and his lifestyle and family values. Stay with me, I'm coming right back. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest still Professor Britus Stephen Aday, and we've been having some interesting conversations here. I mean, your name Aday straight away gives you up um, from Ashanti region, right? Yeah, Which part of the Ashanti region do you hail from? But Aday can come from any Akan area. Okay. So it's a 40 day lunar month. Okay. So therefore, Akwesi there. And mm. that is the 40th day. Okay. But I come from southern part of Ashanti. Okay. In the, the traditional area is called Adansi. Mm. And uh, my father originally originated from Drabi in Ashanti, but settled in Shiremwasi. Okay. And, and married my mother some three miles away from Akwansrim. Okay. So I call Shiremwasi my village, uh -huh. not my mother's or my father, because okay. that's where I was born, <laughs> bred. <laughs> Butter this, and cheese. Yeah, this idea of, you know, <laughs> Some time ago, you came from here, right there. And I now you are from here. I know Tios Rubo <laughs> sometimes want to give me a cane because he's my distance cousin and I don't go to Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your parents were farmers? Yes. Okay. Peasant farmers. Everybody in my village was a f peasant farmer. Mm. Occasionally, we have people like Katie Hammond's father, who is a, was a carpenter mm -hmm. from uh, other places, and then the... Uh, Fanti and then Evers will come in as you know, Coco, Hans, and, uh, but the indigenous, everybody was a, a, a person farmer. Mm -hmm. We were not at the scene now. Okay. So, so whilst at Shremwase, uh, you say that it's now a bush, how was the place w while she were there? A very lovely, small, clean town, a village mm -hmm. of about 14 or so, 15 houses. Okay. But we were not on the roadside. Okay. Actually, I was about 25 years. We moved from there to the roadside. Uh -huh. Come and watch small. <laughs> <laughs> How the cars were the passing. The cars were passing. <laughs> so where 
we were born, of course, was left and it became a bush. Mm. But interestingly now, the village has grown uh -huh. and so touch almost the old place. Okay. <laughs> I see. Yes. Quite interesting. So, how would you describe growing up in Shirmuasi? Well, to you it may sound, uh, but to us it was normal. Everybody was, by your standard, poor. We go to farm, we come, we eat, we play under the, the moon. We go to the village primary school. Uh, if your parents were enlightened, because someone wouldn't even send their children. Then you reach P6, that's the highest you can go. Okay. Then the next town, Gofiedru, uh -huh. had a middle school. Okay. And you won't believe that about six villages have to compete for space in that one school. Mm. And then we went there okay. for four years. And then you finish, and most likely, you will become a farmer. <laughs> but uh, if you will pass, and wha if their parents could afford, go to secondary school, okay. but you couldn't afford. Like Okay. But I got admission to a post middle school training college. Okay. So you also. Mm. And that was a wonderful breakthrough for me. Okay. Because with the help of advice of teacher Amua from uh, Nkonya Urapon, mm -hmm. which is my second adopted town. Okay. I went there and that's where I did my set A, O level, A level. Mm. So in four years, I could come and see the light. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Quite interesting. Yes. But but it all started at the uh, Methodist Primary School, yes. right? In Fremoise. Okay. The school is still there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But now we have uh, a GHS and we have one of the best secondary schools in Ghana. Kind Kate C, Professor Day, right? Well, <laughs> and my wife <laughs> and the board of Ghana Christians. So okay. And for the past five years, Five cohorts of graduates, mm. only three human beings didn't pass all eight subjects' first attempt. Wow. And uh, last year, for example, the year before, 100% straight A's. Mm. We have even three graduates from Ashasi University MasterCard Scholarship. Interesting. Someone is going to medical school this year from Shemwasi. Shemwasi. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> So my greatest joy mm. is the school in Oh, there's so that nothing every like year going back home. 30 to 60 people qualify for university from just 12 villages. Yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. It, 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 it is. But I also know about, I mean, you not having the, that uh, continental breakfast and all that. So you eat and PC in the morning and PC in the afternoon, fufu in the evening and all that's that. That's in Shemwasi in, now. In, in Shemwasi. Now, now, occasionally, if you give me uh, a British breakfast, I'll bless my soul <laughs> with sausage. With <laughs> so don't, <laughs> don't say. Yes, at my home, and my <laughs> wife is a home s economist, he won't let me eat them, <laughs> but he allows me to eat it. So if you invite me to uh, <laughs> Bisky, you eat? <laughs> you take some continental then, uh, breakfast. Yeah. No, no continental. <laughs> British breakfast. English breakfast. English breakfast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I went to school in England, uh, I, I, in Glasgow, and worked in London. So. Definitely so. So I've but acquired a taste, but, but I still like mine. You have to. <laughs> and I mean, I know there were um, fun moments. There were also terrible moments, I guess. W how would you describe I mean, the environment. To, to, to be up. honest, <laughs> I never thought that uh, there was a terrible moment. We had a lot of fun. Okay. I mean, eating papacy for lunch and breakfast <laughs> was normal. <laughs> Everybody ate it. Yes. And fufu. And my parents were hard working. Okay. We never got. There's only one moment in all my life mm -hmm. that I felt a bit uneasy. So for okay. me, it was normal. Okay. I mean, I mean what? Everybody what? had one cloth. <laughs> and that is so. If people were richer, like you go to see s with this dress in from Wasi, <laughs> others feel they are poor. But everybody is in tattered clothes, uh, nobody worries. <laughs> when, obia, obia. when I was in middle school, okay. and I was the first boy from s uh, seventh grade to tenth grade, mm -hmm. but from t eighth grade, people were passing who were be below me, okay. their parents could afford, they go to secondary school. Mm. Uh, ninth grade the same, tenth grade the same. Then you had the sense that there's something wrong with you. you. 
Yeah. You were the first boy. I got admission at one time mm. to Prempe College, yeah. Opokuware, yeah. in Fancy Pim, oh. Agri Memorial. Goodness. And all of them passed by because you cannot even go and pay the deposit <laughs> so that you can go and struggle <laughs> for scholarship. That is wow. the only moment I felt a bit uncomfortable. Mm. I said, there's something. How all those people whom I were helping, but I was helping and everything else, go to secondary school and you can't go because your parents could not afford. Yeah. So when I got opportunity to go to teacher's college, which was free, yeah. really, <laughs> yeah, the course, you know, correspondence course. Goodness. Two and a half years <laughs> after Sir seven, I had O level. Wow. The next year I had A level. Oh wow. Because, I mean, it was <laughs> you didn't leave small chance. <laughs> you won't believe that I finished Legon and taught in the final year those of my mates in the tenth grade uh -huh. who went to secondary school. Wow. <laughs> so that but other than that. For me, what people call hardship, even today, <laughs> I just live like a peasant in my house. Okay. Yes, I drive a four wheel because I have to go places. Mm -hmm. but when I come home, mm -hmm. I work in my farm. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you finish, I'm going to eat my apesi. <laughs> Tomorrow it is fufu day. Exactly. <laughs> Healthy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so uh, I mean, Fremasi was fun growing yeah. up, yeah. and. Uh, we you throw that the moon in the you have cocoa yam we put in the fire after fufu you put your cocoa yam you have reserved uh -huh. and then you know after playing that's playing, supposed to be dessert, dessert. Or, something. <laughs> <laughs> or snack you make a hole at the bottom <laughs> you put in some little uh, uh, yeah you know what it is the <laughs> man who is uh, taking shooting Red us oil. He's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've even cocoyam here. If okay. you if you are told me you like it, I'll put some cocoyam and pursue on fire for you. <laughs> Quite interesting. So from Shemwase and then you had some private uh, studies and then that landed you in London? No, no. During the good old days, I think I got I passed economics like maybe with half a mark E. Okay. <laughs> geography <laughs> because geography came easy to the farmer's boy. Uh -huh. When did they say igneous rock and say sedimentary rock? Other people are trying to find out what it is. But you know ah. already. No, we don't go for you. I say a fossil and then sedimentary rock. So I got a B. Okay. And those days, just with a B in economic uh, geography mm. and E, you qualified. Okay. Five O levels, two A level. Mm. Came to Legon, did BSc economics. As soon as I finished, I got a Commonwealth scholarship to do my master's. Wow. 25, I was a master's holder, wow. came back with a car, wow. worked with investment center, and since then, by God's grace, it has been up with. So yeah. the first time you went to London, I mean, that was the first time from, mm -hmm. um, the training college was where? Sefirioso, great city. And from there, here you found yourself in London. Well, I came to Accra first, so I, I, I acclimatized. <laughs> Uh, uh, before yes. before Even you went to yes. London, uh, the, it's Legon. I started uh, first time. I'm eating salad, you know. Okay, and I that was in Legon. Legon, and you, know, and I remember one thing. They <laughs> gave us some dessert, <laughs> and I asked for the name. They says, Blanc Monge Napolitain. <laughs> I say, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as I finished my ma uh, first degree, <laughs> I got a scholarship. So straight I went and did my master's mm. and came back and I started work. So, so, uh, so at the UK airport, yeah. I mean, how was the feeling? <laughs> Actually, we're, going, we're passing through London to go to Glasgow. So we changed, British Caledonian then. Yes. We changed and we arrived. I went with my best man who was, whose father was U.S. Ikrashi. Mm. And when we got there, Alexis, oh God, Mimi. <laughs> I just went and looked somewhere and said, Who is you? Where is he crashing? Eba. What's he winning? Nami. 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 Oh, wow. We are too risk for reopening. They put us in a YMCA. And we didn't have money for the two weeks. Uh huh. But we went with Gale, Gare and Shito. Okay. And the breakfast was for free. We came with the hotel so yes we will eat as done. much breakfast <laughs> to food <laughs> and then then we take some of the rolls which was free mm -hmm. and then we bought a little uh, 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 flask mm -hmm. we we'll pour uh, milk into it that's our dinner okay then in the afternoon <laughs> it's gary 
and shito. shito. And then we went and bought egg because the whole dozen of egg was about one pound. Mm. And you know how we cook the egg? Mm -mm. I put it under hot water from the tap. Okay. Then it parboiled. <laughs> so we put the gary. We put ah, two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> that was how he survived <laughs> for the two weeks before the reopening because after that they'll give us allowance yes, and, and from there and from there <laughs> life began, began. <laughs> <laughs> enjoyed our time mm. in glasgow okay <laughs> that's interesting yeah, yeah. but i must say you've really served your country well and we really admire you we appreciate you a lot but i mean throughout this journey what would you describe as your biggest challenge? Hmm. Employment-wise, okay. I think there are two. What you have left out is that I also spent 11 and a half years working with the UN. Okay, you did that. Yes, uh, from Commonwealth three years, I went to the UN, spent six and a half years as in the New York. You are so lucky. And then during the transition of South Africa, okay. when apartheid came to an end, mm. One day I was there and my boss, Ellen Johnson Salif, he was then there, yes, there, comes to my office and says that you are going to South Africa as the UN ambassador or coordinator. Okay. And at that time, we didn't know whether South Africa would go into civil war mm. between the white and the blacks. I had never served in any country office during my time in the UN. Mm -hmm. And Ellen, how do you... <laughs> land on me that I should be, <laughs> and I was his, to to being the director of the bureau, I was his chef of the cabinet. Okay. So, why me? <laughs> so I got an excuse. I said, Ellen, I won't go. Oh? And he asked me, why? Because I knew that he might have gone to fight for me to be the UN coordinator in South Africa. That's a big, big position. One. And I said, Ellen, when I married, I told my wife that I would never leave her for three months under any circumstance, so I won't go. <laughs> and because we don't know that that's going to be a civil war among them, yes. it was a non-family duty station. So you can't go with any member of your family? Ellen, just look at me and just walk out Away. of the office. <laughs> What is in her mind? I'm here to ask her. You know, say, this must be a foolish boy. <laughs> you know what I have done in order to, <laughs> to do this <laughs> honor? This honor? <laughs> so I, work, I knew that I was in trouble. <laughs> I sat in my office, worked the whole day. She never talked to me, nothing. She went out. About six, seven. We were working sometimes very late. Mm. She comes to me and says, Stephen, you are going. <laughs> I said, Ellen, did you hear what I it's said? It's not negotiable. I said, I won't go. She says, you are going. And he says, how are you getting me go? You, you know what he did? <laughs> God bless her. He had gone to the top and negotiated whether the secretary general He says, you will go, you will leave your family because you can't go with your family. Mm. Every six weeks, we will give you a business class ticket to come, so and, come visit and visit your family. family for a week. Wow. 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 So it was a big challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out well, this and you won't believe it. I was there for six months, and you could not even. The blacks have come from the uh, the Sowetos and the rest. Mm -hmm. They were jubilating and that things and crying also. But I was always in my uh, corduroy. I like. I don't like jeans too much. Mm -hmm. Going to Soweto, Alexandria, and other things. And at the same time, the next time you are in the suit meeting Mandela and the rest, <laughs> so you were <laughs> moving up and down. I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges that I had. Mm. In I ended up well and I was rewarded. Do you know the reward? No. After I finished there, they sent me to beautiful Namibia for four and a half years as the UN coordinator and rest of. <laughs> <laughs> and Namibia was almost, <laughs> compared to <laughs> South Africa, <laughs> was yeah. almost like, they are, nice, they are nice people, it's a smaller country, mm -hmm. a lot of meat to eat. <laughs> 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 so it was, so I think that that probably was one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. that I had with my... Yeah. No, climbing your mm -hmm. career ladder, mm -hmm. but it, it, it all ended yes, well. Yeah. I mean, as an educationist, how would you describe or assess Ghana's education system? Have we lived up to expectation? 
It's a sad story. It is, I think. It's a sad story. First of all, we have allowed the quality of our basic education to collapse in the public sector. It's so sad. The teachers are not teaching. They are qualified, far more qualified than we were. Because mine was you first start seven and go for four years. Yes. These days, they are almost all graduates. Yeah. I hear that from today. They are, there will be no people teachers teaching. Wow. We were having people teachers teaching alongside with us. And yet we were producing results far more and better. Yep. At this moment, if you go to the poor private schools, the people who are teaching there are secondary school dropouts. Mm -hmm. But all their children are literate. But go to the public sector, the average person cannot read and write because the teachers have refused to teach. And they are being allowed to get away with murder. So sad. In teaching in a school, only three things matter. The supervision, that's the authority of the head teacher and the supervising them, insisting that teachers do teach and holding them accountable. These have been let go at the basic level. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I and you can see it graphically in yep. our school in my village. Mm -hmm. Do you know that when people come from the 15 junior high schools, we have to spend one year with them to make them up to standards that you can now teach them secondary school. Wow. And believe me, do you know how we do it? Mm -hmm. We start from class one. Oh, really? The reason is that we found that there are gaps in the education. Mm -hmm. And how do you know where they had the gap? gaps? Are. So we start with class one. They will spend, if one week they finish, we concentrate on English, mathematics, and then we teach them ICT, okay. computer. Okay. And they all type mm. after <coughs> one term. So if we finish the class one course in one week, we know that they understand it. Yeah, then, then you we go, go to, to the next two. level. If wow. it's two weeks, we go. And we spend a whole year just to remedy them. Yeah, and bridge the gaps. And then as a result, we are getting 100% results mm -hmm. when they go to the senior secondary school. Mm -hmm. When they go to senior secondary school nationwide, yeah. this is the year we are celebrating that 40, 60% uh, passed. Yeah. But do you know what even that means? Mm -hmm. And that is a good result. Yeah. It means 40% failed. 40% failed. And the average over the years is 50%. 50% wow. pass and 50% fail. Mm -hmm. Any education system which produces 50% almost failures yep. is in die crisis. But do you know why even the 50% passed? First, you will always have some people, God talented and that, no matter what, Definitely. if you put him in the hole, they will still make the it. The rest, they have to pay for two uh, extra classes. Yes. The same teachers, mm -hmm. who, they won't teach them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's after the class, then and they if will you don't take go, extra money and you, teach. You will fail. Yeah. Because they will tell you, the teachers themselves will tell you, if you don't come, you will fail. And they will, you will fail too. Quite interesting. And this is the system we are presiding over. I have always said, you know, you don't need to put more, m the government is spending enough money mm -hmm. and not getting the right output. Yeah. But the secret of changing it is not more money. Yep. Simply, and that's my extreme revolutionary one, mm -hmm. just give notice and sack all the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> Three months notice during va long vacation. Be you are no longer employed. <laughs> then ask people to employ, uh, to apply for headship, yeah. head teachers and principals. Yeah. Select quality ones, mm -hmm. put them in the schools, and then say that now, and pay, pay them well, yeah. pay the principal and the head teacher about twice their salary. Yeah. Because they are so important. And say now you are free to employ whoever you want to employ. Okay. I'll give you the money. But you, from today, have the authority to discipline them and get the results. And if you don't get the results, you, the head teacher, you'll be fired. The one, you will be held responsible. Within one year, the quality of education will rise from here to there. 
that is my extreme mm. remedy. <laughs> and the quickest way to improve education in Ghana. In Ghana. All the rest, not that I don't believe in textbooks, uh, classrooms, uh, all the teachers, education, and things. Mm. But let me tell you, unless we change the structure, the management, and the accountability, every money is going down the drain. Mm. But because our universities are limited, we will still get sufficient people who will pass. Yeah. But we are raising an army of dangerous, unemployable ones. And yeah. one of these days, I may be gone, mm -hmm. but you may have your head rolling mm -hmm. by the thieves whom you, you didn't train. Yeah. But my last point, is, and that's what I want to spend my life for, mm -hmm. is to help children five and six year olds mm. to be literate. Okay. Because when they are literate, they don't, they need very little from a teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You they know, can't do everything yes, on their own. My two granddaughters, the older ones in Australia, you know, they are when they went to school, they are, their teachers say that they are going to have a conference with their parents. Mm. Says, we don't know what to do with your children. <laughs> because <laughs> their age is small, <laughs> but their brain is up. <laughs> so <laughs> then they call me that, you know, that my children, they my say that, you know, <laughs> we have to tomorrow go and meet their teachers. <laughs> I say, go and tell their teachers, uh. my grandchildren are not coming so much to be taught. <laughs> But <laughs> to have an atmosphere, you encourage them to learn. Mm -hmm. And also, children need socialization with their peers. Yes. So when they come, when it is mathematics, and he's in class one, mm -hmm. and he can do a f fourth year mathematics, mm -hmm. let, him s let, let her sit in class one, mm -hmm. give her the fourth year mathematics, and, and she will do her work, yes. and the teacher spend one minute to yeah. go and see that she has done right. Yes. So that's how they are doing. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that one. So okay. if you know the Nat and the Nagra thing that I'm their enemy. <laughs> I am going to donate the book, the books to, to them. them. And to be put online. Everybody can learn, download it. Mm -hmm. Because when children get literate at the ages of five, six, and seven, which they do even in Togo. Yeah. The French child in Togo, if you go, is literate. Mm -hmm. The Ghanaian child, when he's coming to Ghana Christian, one of them, Write the name of your school, uh, of your hometown. Mm. Was it Adiemra? They mean to mean super. <laughs> oh, she has gone to school for nine years at Adiemra. Was it Adi Adiemra? They mean to mean super. Thank God we are able to make them pass their wasi in four years with Bro. excellence. <laughs> so, which among your kids um, is following your steps? of them, I laugh at them. All of them <laughs> said that, you know, they are not interested in teaching. Me and my wife are teaching. <laughs> it's okay. The question is this. If you do anything well, you end up as a teacher. Yeah. If you are a lawyer, you, you go and teach at law school. Yeah. If you are a doctor, <laughs> you go to medical school. And teach. Even if you are not teaching there, you are at the wards. The medical students will be brought for you to follow you. Definitely. So, me, I didn't mind. <laughs> Two of my boys, both of them are engineers. <laughs> The older one is a, a girl, is a, a medical doctor. Okay. She ended up teaching at Ghana Medical School. Okay. <laughs> the other <laughs> one is a, a manager of social services in Australia. Every now and then he calls me, oh, I am, oh, daddy, I'm busy. Uh -huh. Why? I'm having some teaching session for <laughs> my staff. I said, Nani <laughs> Yama. <laughs> you said you didn't want to teach. <laughs> the last one. Why is it in your blood? <laughs> the last one. Is now the executive director of the school. Okay. <laughs> Only one of them took, took teaching profession. Okay. And he is the topmost biology teacher in Australia now. Wow. And every wow. year consistently. Ew. So they have all, they said they would, didn't want to teach. <laughs> directly they, or indirectly. They ended up. <laughs> <laughs> you must be a proud father. No, no, so did, did you ever have um, time to rest? What, what do you do when... Oh, me? What do you First do of all, I don't go on holidays. Okay. Because every day I have a holiday. <laughs> I, w I work whole day and at 8.30 I fall dead asleep. asleep. <laughs> and I will sleep for seven to eight 
hours non-stop. That's good. Actually, Very yeah. good. I must say that after when I'm married, after one year, I say, thank God my wife has not divorced me. <laughs> <laughs> A, a bride what? who sleeps <laughs> throughout the night. <laughs> Don't ask me how we had our children. It's not for television. <laughs> oh my goodness. But, <laughs> so really I I and work is hobby. I love work. Hmm. No matter what work I do, I just love it. Yeah. And then I rest. Okay. And then the weekend, Saturdays, normally I spend doing house chores with my wife okay. right from the we for 35 years we married initially mm -hmm. we never had any helper oh wow we, i i planned the food myself my oh wife my goodness it. oh my <laughs> god <laughs> you know at Gimpa, he's a good husband me, too me and my wife <laughs> we are in our house i do the washing with my children we uh -huh. do, I, all of them yeah. so for me that is sundays i end up all my day in church and uh, resting so wow. so every day is resting day yeah, every day is resting <laughs> alongside working yes and writing <laughs> and those type of things uh, do, do you listen to music sometimes to be honest with you what you call leisure i have not it has never become it wasn't if you are you are looking for survivor <laughs> so i really don't sit down that i'm listening to music okay the only music when i go to church i like dancing with mm. church music okay but that's all i don't listen to music mm. surprisingly my reading habit is so bad you know <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, do. I don't read that much mm. i read the bible much almost through the bible every year and a few christian literature okay. but for example my children read about four times faster than me because of how I taught yeah. them to read. Mm -hmm. So I don't I, I'm not I've never joined any club <laughs> in my life. <laughs> whether even the good ones like you know uh, Lions Club. Lions Club, the other um, one uh, Rotary Club Rotary Club or you know going to join golf, golf club or you tennis know, club. <laughs> my life is centered around three locals. Working, family Church okay. and sleeping. <laughs> That's been my life. So, and of course, I, I do a lot of writing work as part of it. But I, I have a very, very simple. Very simple life. Very simple and life. And I think the resting is yes. also helping it because helps. at 74, yeah. I must say you look very healthy, yeah. Yeah. very strong for your age. Yeah. And uh, we just appreciate you no, no, no. for Thank what God. you've yeah, do yeah, been doing God's for, for Mother Ghana. Thank you so much for opening up to us. We really, really appreciate you. Keep up the good work. God bless you. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, God willing, we'll be bringing you another edition of PM Personality Profile. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.